Good morning, everybody. And uh, do you know what? Today I arrived at the gym at half past seven, then found out that the gym doesn't open till eight o'clock. So I've decided to do a live, a very spontaneous live uh, presentation, I suppose. And it's about what can you do and what can't you do in property and in business and in life and basically in everything. And this all started out as what can you do and what can't you do in property. But then I realized that, hey, this is stuff that is in life and in everything else that we do on a daily basis. And how can we profit from identifying what we can do, profit from that, identifying what we can't do, profit from that? Um, Because I think we're all the same, aren't we? We all have fears and worries about any kind of investing and whether that be whether we're investing in life, in business, in property or whatever, we all have um, issues with jumping over that first step. But also we can all see potential, we can all see opportunities. But if we can all see opportunities, then why don't we take all of those opportunities? So that got me thinking this morning while I'm sat in the car park outside the gym waiting for it to open. Um, You know, because there you go. This is this is my opportunity today to get those those juices flowing, so to speak. But but look, I want to show you a few of my own thoughts on how you might profit from the things that you can and cannot do. And I want to help you. change the way you see opportunities and think about opportunities and the potential and the positives always in everything you think about because it's just a calculation. It's not uh, you, to turn it from an emotion into a calculation is the key. So I want to give you my thoughts on how I do it and, and how I think about it. And that's not to say that I don't think about the negatives. I absolutely do. But I just I see them differently to some. Um, So I I wanted to share that with you quite spontaneously. Because all it is is a formula. It's like a calculation or a a process, if you like, of a way of thinking. And if you can get that into a habit where you can spot the positives and you can calculate all of the positives and all of the opportunities and potentials and also calculate the negatives, you will be able to see the negatives for exactly what it is rather than just an emotion which overtakes all of the positives and almost ruins the opportunities because you're worried and focused all on those negative downsides, risks, problems that could or could not happen. So I've written a ton of notes here and I'm just going to go through them as best I can because this was quite a spontaneous live really. Um, But wouldn't we all love to not worry? Or wouldn't we all love to worry but understand what we're worrying about and be able to calculate that into a sum and into a formula. So, look, first of all, I want you to be able to use the negative. So we're going to go through that right now. And I'm going to relate this to property mainly. Um, Because worrying is actually a good thing as long as it's under your control. So uh, anyway, property. I want you to remember that quote focus on what you can control rather than what you can't control. Well, I think that's bollocks because I think that you should put your effort into what you can control and calculate what you cannot control. Because of course, if we put a load of effort into things that we cannot control, then we're going to not be putting as much effort as we could do into the things that we can control. We as human beings, and I do too, everybody does, we spend so much time thinking about things that could go wrong and worrying about those, we tend to just lose all track of what could go right and what profits we might be able to make. So I'm very much trying to change my mindset and thinking about all the things that could go right and then calculate the things that could go wrong. So the way I want to do this with property is, first of all, I want to work out and calculate the potential in that opportunity, right? And this is the same with all life. It's the same in business. It's the same in um, any decision you make. You calculate the potential and you work out the potential. And then once you've got that potential, like for an example, the job done value of this opportunity, what is that in a number? And this, again, this is the same in business. It's the same in life. If you work out an opportunity as what could go well, what's that end job done value 
that really um, you can work towards. That's your goal, right? Your goal is to get to that job done value, the end goal. And if you calculate that into a number, then you can work out the future return to you and the benefit to you. Again, in property, it's the same thing. It's working out what the, once you've done a refurbishment, how much is it going to be worth? How much profit are you going to make when you sell it? How much profit are you going to make each month when you rent it out? And then also, you can calculate all of the profits associated. And I don't just mean profit in money. I mean profit in your life. If you're going to take advantage of an opportunity, then what is the benefit to your life as well as your bank balance? And I think that's really important to understand. Now, once you know that number, you can work out what it is exactly you need to do to get to that goal. As long as you've turned that into a, a number or a set goal, now you're very, you, you've spotted an opportunity. You've seen that there is potential in this opportunity. You know that. Everybody sees those potentials and those opportunities. But how do we get it to the next stage? So you've seen the potential, you've seen the opportunity, and now you want to go for it. But there are two halves of you here. One half of you is going to see that opportunity and not do anything about it because you think about the fear and the worry and that overtakes, that takes over. And so you worry about what might happen rather than, so what if it doesn't happen? What if these problems don't happen? Hey, that's the, that's the goal, right? So now you've set that goal of this is my opportunity. This is where I want to get it to. This is the benefit and the profit to me. Now you need to work out what you need to do to get to that goal. And this is where we start getting into the fun parts because that might be um, that might be calculating your refurbishment on a property. It might be working out what you need to spend in a business deal or a business opportunity to get to that goal, what profits you need to make. What, what is the potential and how can you get to the potential? That's the idea. And it's the same for yourself as well. What do you need to do? If you know you've got potential in yourself, whether that be as a property investor, as a business person, as a father, as a husband, if you know you've got potential in yourself too, then you can work out what you need to do to get there. Because we, we all miss big opportunities and potential because... Our energy and our focus goes into what might be or what might go wrong, what the downside is, and our worry and our fear just takes over in all of that. And I bet we can all relate to that. I bet all of us have seen opportunities and seen potentials and not taken it up, not taken that opportunity because you fear it and you, you fear what might go wrong. So how can we take that fear and turn it into something you can use and something positive? Well, now, look, I've been doing this for a number of years now, but I, the way I see it now is I look at an opportunity and I get really excited about an opportunity. I can see the profits. I can see the benefit to my life. I can see the benefit to my family and to my staff and to everybody whatever that opportunity is. And I see that and I'm consumed by that optimism and ambition. And I bet you're all the same. And then I start thinking about, right, what can go wrong? Now, I'm actually, in a weird way, I'm trying to focus on the bad stuff a bit more. Um, because sometimes I'm a little bit blinded by the opportunity. So I don't know if you're the same as that. I don't know if you can relate to that. But yeah, I, I'm now trying to calculate my fear and my, uh, my challenges and the downside a bit more. So for you, you see an opportunity, you know the op opportunity's potential, and now I want you to calculate the fear, calculate the risk and the downside. What might go wrong? And I want you to write these things down. If, you're, if you see a property and you work out that this is going to be a great property investment, I've seen the potential here, or maybe it's an investment for your own life, or it's a work opportunity or a business opportunity, write down what could go wrong? And write it in a list. Do it on your phone, do it on your pad or whatever. Write it in a list. And then next to those lists of things, write the chances of that actually happening. And I'll use the property example I used last night in, in my live video. If What are the chances of your property falling down? Actually falling down, so it doesn't exist. They're almost impossible. What are the chances of your tenant not paying the rent for a year? It's very low. 
If you look at the rent arrears in the entire country, then we're probably only looking at one or two percent of all tenants. It's probably very low. Maybe it's more than that. I don't know the stat. I'd be interested if someone does know that stat. But what I'm saying is right next to the risk, what the chances are of that risk actually happening. And then think about what protection have I got from that risk? So if the building falls down, you've probably got buildings insurance, you're covered. If the roof caves in, you've probably got buildings insurance, covered. If the tenant doesn't pay rent for a year, hopefully you've got a letting agent for a start that can help you out of that pickle. But also you've probably got insurance, a landlord insurance or a rent guarantee or a, uh, any sort of protection insurance that would enable you to get that rent back. So you're covered. So we've calculated that risk and we've put it into a number. We've worked out what the chances are of that actually happening. And now we've got risk, yes, but we've turned it into that number and numbers aren't that scary. A number isn't that scary. The risk and the emotion attached to the fear attached to the risk, so the emotion and fear attached to the risk, that's scary. So we need to stop being scared, don't we? That's, that's the goal. Imagine how awesome you would feel if you had an opportunity and it's a major opportunity in your life and you could manage your own fear. Now that would be kind of cool, right? I would love that. If I could see this a property opportunity or a business opportunity or an opportunity in life for my children, for my wife, for my family, and I could see an opportunity and I could not be scared of it. I could analyze it. I could calculate it. And I could decide completely unemotionally whether I take that opportunity or whether I don't. It's the same in property. Do you know what? When I first started investing in property, I was so scared that everything was going to go horribly wrong until I did these things. And I know I haven't really given you any kind of actual strategy or um, processes here. I'm kind of giving you an idea and my thoughts on my idea. And I will go into this in a bit more detail another time. But really, what I'm trying to say is, don't be scared of your fear in any opportunity. Have a look at the opportunity. First of all, work out the big stuff, the cool stuff. Work out what it is you can actually achieve in this opportunity. And get excited about it. I do. I literally, I get blinded by my own excitement sometimes. And now I'm able to calculate the risks now, I'm still super excited about the actual opportunity, the profits, the benefits to my life, to my business, to my family. I still get so excited about that. But now I also calculate completely unemotionally, completely methodically, what is the risk to my benefit? What is the risk to my potential here? And I try and put numbers next to everything. I stick it in a spreadsheet and look, it's made up. But I find that once I turn it all into numbers, I can see it and I can calculate it and it's not scary anymore. Because look, we we all worry. We are human beings. We worry about stuff, especially when there's something that could achieve some sort of success or benefit to us. We all worry about that shit, right? We all do. So I'm trying to show you how to calculate your worry and turn it into a benefit and turn it into a, a calculation that will enable you in property to make the right offer. It will enable you to, in life, make the right decisions and in business to make, to do the right deals, to take the right, right, to take advantage of the right opportunities. And also in work, to make the right decisions, to be more effective in your job. And that's what this is all about. So, hey, look, if you're ever unsure on what to do. If you see an opportunity, remember we all see opportunities. The difference between um, successful and unsuccessful is taking that opportunity and that is decided by how we govern and manage our own fear of the opportunity. We're all scared of opportunities. But if you're ever unsure of what to do and how to calculate your fear, what I would say to you is just write it down, all of your fears on that opportunity bit by bit, get into detail if you want. Like I've just used that example of property investing. What happens if the roof falls in? How, what are the chances of that roof falling down? How much is it going to cost? If the roof fell down every 50 years and it's going to cost you 10,000 quid if it does, there's your calculation. You know you've got to save out of your rent profit 
10,000 pounds over 50 years. I can't work out what it is. It's, it's small numbers. If you've got a, if you've got a, I don't know, protect yourself against your boiler blowing up every 10 years. Look, we know that a boiler should be replaced after about 10 years. So if that's gonna cost you 1,500 quid, you need to make sure you're saving up 1,500 quid over 10 years. So now that fear, which everybody has, becomes a number, and numbers are not scary. So look, <clears throat> what this all was, like I say, I'm sat outside the gym here, I got here at half seven, I realized that the gym does, has changed, it doesn't open till eight o'clock, so I thought, hey, I'm gonna go live. Um, and what this is, is to see the positivity, right? We all want to think positively, we all want to be, positive people. Everybody does. But what we have, what we do as human beings is we cancel out that positivity because we get scared of stuff. We think about the downsides, we think about the risks, and we worry about those rather than focusing on the potential and the opportunity and calculating. So my quote is, you know that quote that says, um, don't worry about things you can't control think about things you can control or something like that. Well, I think that's absolute bollocks. I think you should think about both. I think you should put your energy into the things you can control, the things that are within your area of management. So what can you do something about and what can't you do something about? So put your energy, so what is my quote? Let me think about this. Put your energy into the things you can control and calculate the things you can't control. Bam! I've just made a quote. Tom Soane, 2020. Anyway, I hope you get what I'm trying to, to talk to you about here. This just popped into my mind today because there's a couple of opportunities that I've got on my table right now that I'm really trying to analyse and calculate the risk for so that I can make sure I have mitigated that risk. Now, one of those is in property. The other one is in business. And I'm doing exactly the same calculation for both. And I'm now, now I've done that calculation, and I will keep you posted on all this because it is very exciting. But now I've done that calculation, I now feel confident in what decision I'm going to make and how I'm going to make it. So wouldn't we all love to have that? I certainly would love to be able to think like that naturally. So I hope that helps. And uh, I uh, hope along the way, if it benefits anybody, then please give this a share round. That's all I want to do. I just want to help one person at a time. So if one person enjoyed that presentation, then give it a share round. Tag someone you think might benefit from that advice. It's just one perspective. It's just my perspective. There are loads of other people and experts out there, probably more expert than me. Um, but I'm very. I'm a very positive thinker. I'm a very optimistic thinker. I see opportunities and I'm very ambitious too. So now I'm building into my own life some sort of ability or cat or a process of also making sure I'm analysing the risks better. Um, and I'm loving it. The, the way that I'm now feeling confident in decision making and confident in property investing and business and life is phenomenal and, and I wish everybody else could have that feeling that I'm having right now every time I see an opportunity. I still get just as excited but now my excitement is there plus an analytical, logical, calculative process alongside it. So right, the gym is open. Um, I've been waffling on for long enough. I'm going to go and uh, do a bit of gym work and then going to go and spend the day Oh, excuse me. Going to go and spend the day with my family and my boys and my wife and have a great laugh. Speak to you all soon. My name's Tom Soane and this is The Anonymous Landlord.